When a narcissist hoovers you, let's talk about ways narcissists hoover and what you can do to help yourself recover from being hoovered. So first of all, what's a hoover? It's when anytime a narcissist is trying to get your attention and suck you back in, anytime they're trying to get your supply, anytime they are reaching back out to you after they have discarded you or after you have left them, they are doing what we call hoovering you. They might hoover you with love bombing. Basically, this is hoovering from every angle that I could think of, <laughs> all right? There's gonna be more. So if you have more, add them to the main comment section. See if it helps other people to recognize when they're being hoovered. So one thing they might do when they hoover is love bomb you. They might send you all this attention, all this affection, all this ah oh, love bombing, it feels so good kind of attention. Make you feel like they've fallen back in love with you. Make you feel like it's, um, you know, just love bombing you in general. They might love bomb you in the form of leaving gifts at your door, sending gifts to your work, flowers, gifts, whatever. Okay. Another thing a narcissist might do when they hoover is the pity ploy. They might make you feel sorry for them. Play on your empathy. Um, do things that or say things that draw you back into feeling sorry for them. They might, um, for example, say you <clears throat> accidentally see them or they make it so that you see them and they might look like they haven't taken care of themselves. Like they're so sad. They might send you a photograph of themselves looking sad, like a, a selfie of sadness, right? Anything to get you to feel pity for them. Another thing they might do, if they get your attention and they get to speak to you or be around you or text you is give you exactly what it was you wanted the entire relationship. They might give you everything you ever wanted, exactly what you wanted to hear, exactly, you know, exactly the words you needed, exactly the thing you needed. They may even go as far as to propose to you or do something like that because it's what they think you always wanted. Whatever it is that you always wanted, they may throw it at you. You guys, this isn't real. This is what a narcissist does to make you believe things are real. So that you go back and what happens after a Hoover is they repeat the same horrible manipulations and tactics of the way they relate, which is love bombing and devaluing you even more so after you go back. All right. So another thing they might do is have an urgent matter they need to talk to you about. They may appeal, like I said, appeal to your empathy. They may give you fake apologies. Apologies that <laughs> if you really listen to them, aren't real apologies. Or they sound like real apologies, but there's no emotion behind them. There's no real feelings. Or a really clever, covert, vulnerable narcissist may actually apologize, but then they don't change the behavior. So accidental calls, butt dials accidental oops i didn't mean to call you oh hey how's it going you know um accidental calls then hanging up or rather calling and hanging up calling and then like so that you see their number if you have blocked them they may use uh numbers that you can't you don't recognize other phones other phone numbers to get a hold of you to try and reach you another thing they might do is guilt or blame you they might guilt you into talking to them and then guilt you into listening to their side of a story and then blame you for things, twist it up in your head so that the cognitive dissonant gets stronger and stronger. And then you're right back with them going, how did I end up here? All right. Um, another thing they might do is threaten you. Yes. You would think if someone was threatening you, you'd run the other way, but not so because they know how to do it just right where you see it as either something to keep you safe to stay with them. They may threaten your friendships. They may threaten to smear you. Um, and some people go back out of fear. Some people talk to them, maybe not go back, but stay in contact, keep giving supply. They're trying to get you to engage. They're not necessarily trying with a Hoover to get you back in their day-to-day -day life. Oftentimes, they're not trying to do that at all. What they're trying to do is keep you on the peripheral part of their life as a side person or secondary supply, or they try to change the relationship so that you become 
someone they turn to to tell things. They, they know it gets a rise out of you to talk about other people. So they do. They use you and use you and use you. They squeeze every bit of using they can out of a person. So, um, yeah, they try to, they, another Hoover might be the let's be friends. Let's be friends. We should be friends. We were together so long. We were really good together at one time. We should be friends. People shouldn't part angry with each other. Let's be friends. They were never your friend. They never actually cared. They never were there for you as you were for them. They're not trying to be your friend. They're trying to keep you as their friend, to keep you so that you will give to them whatever it is they want. All right. Um, another thing they might do is use abandonment guilt about how you abandoned them and how you knew that they had these experiences in their life and people hurt them and then abandonment and, you know, not, it's not real um, abandonment, right? It's not, it's, it's their, their projecting onto you. You're, you're being forced to stay in a situation that's toxic for you because of the fear of hurting someone else in that way, or they will trigger your own abandonment issues by giving pieces of themselves and pulling away by um, making you feel like if you don't, if you don't snatch me back up, I'm going to go and run away to someone else, whatever it is, they will trigger your own abandonment feelings if you have them. Well, anyone would have them, right? Because this is what narcissists do. They set it up. It cause more self-doubt in you by gaslighting you. Gaslighting you all, all in, diff in many, many, many different ways while they're trying to talk to you so that you doubt your own reasons for leaving. So you doubt your own not wanting to talk to them. All right. They will send in friends, the good old flying monkeys, right? They'll send in friends to test the waters, to change the narrative. In other words, they'll send in friends with a dialogue about, oh my gosh, they've changed so much. Wow. They're really lost without you. I've heard it. I've heard of friends being sent in and the friends will say things like, you know, they were never as good as they were when they were with you. They were, you were really good for them. You were so good. I know it must've been hard. They're a difficult person, but boy, were you good for them. You really made their life better. What does that do to an empathic person who is a people pleasing giver? It makes you feel like you want to run back to the thing that you were good for so that you have purpose in your life that relates. And it also, it, it's a fulfilling relationship, but it really isn't when you look at the truth of what the relationship was, right? Okay. They will um, pretend to break the, they will pretend that that breakup never happened. Sometimes there are some that will be like, well, I'm just going to go. And they take off and they give you a long, prolonged silent treatment. Well, when someone's silent for four months kind of means they're gone, right? And they don't give you the opportunity to end things, or they do, but because you ended it, they pretend they didn't hear it, okay? And then they come back with a hoover as if nothing happened, or well, what do you mean we're not together? Of course we're together. Ha <laughs> ha, when I see you next, blah, blah, blah. And pretend that that, break, that that breakup never took place. It is the most confusing thing. I've heard this several times with people I've talked to, and I'm like, I don't even know what I would think if someone do that. I'd be like, what kind of delusion are you in? We're in two different worlds. But at the same time, it plays a trick on your brain when you hear someone doing that to you because you start to go back into the feelings of cognitive dissonance and you start thinking, ah, what if I could do it better this time? What if it's better? What if it would be okay? There's an opening. What they're doing when they're hoovering is creating an opening. They're opening any if you, if you have an opening toward them, they're pushing it wide open so they can step in or pull you back into their reality, okay? So um, another thing that they might do is um, sentimentality. Send you photographs. Send you uh, vacation reminders of the good times you had. Um, talk, to, talk to you or talk to friends that then get back to you about anything that is sentimental or has any sentimental value so that you then go into your empathy, go into your remembrances, go into your emotions of what it was, slip into their delusion again and get sucked back in. Or you just have a fun conversation about good old days, the good, the good times, the, oh, the fun we had. And then what are you left feeling? Hurt. You're left feeling hurt and like you want that thing back again, right? So then the, another thing is they might use social media to 
influence you um, to break no contact with them. So they're hoovering you without actually contacting you. They will, you know, like your stuff on social media, or they will post pictures of themselves, assuming that you're looking at them all happy and having a good time so that you're either getting frustrated with them or you're wishing you had them back or you're seeing how good they're doing when you're feeling terrible. Whatever it is, it's making your attention focus on them. That is why social media block the heck out of them everywhere. Don't look, resist the urge to look because it's all a game at that point. And the game's on because they got nothing left to lose. All right. So another thing that they might do. Oh, that's what I said. It, so that is, those are some tactics. Okay. Those are some of the tactics. They may show up at your doorstep. Did I say that one or your work? They may just show up. I've even heard of one contacting an ex over a broken flower pot, like legitimately broken clay flower pot that you can get at any shop that sells flower pots. Nothing special. No, like in the thing was broken and wanted it back. That's just a flat out Hoover, right? Um, they also would show up in this person's yard and like leave things or just show up and walk by. I've heard of another one that liked to stand outside, kind of stalkery, weird stuff, right? Um, I've heard of another one showing up and being across the street at a neighbor's house helping with a car repair. Did they really need to come over and do that? No, right? So yeah, or just showing up at your door. Showing up and, and one tactics they might use are um, luring you back in romantically luring you back in um, seductively, fighting with you. A fight is still a hoover. Anytime they get your attention, anytime that you are giving supply, anytime that you are focusing on them, even a little bit to them, that's a win. That is a hoover. That's what it is. So let's talk about ways of dealing with these hoovers. To a person who's being hoovered, they feel a lot. There's a lot of feelings. Most people aren't like, eh, whatever. Cool. Go your own way. Who cares? No. Most people feel anxiety, stress, fear, um, pressure, guilt, uh, terror, sadness, shock, overwhelm, the feelings of wanting to engage, feeling sucked back in, feeling love fe re-engaged, feeling attraction re-engaged, feeling trauma bonds re-engaged. People feel a lot when they're being hoovered. All right. So understand what the hoovers are. Okay. Different ways they might do it. There's other ways. That's just a whole lot of them. <laughs> um, and understand that what comes after that hoover is no good. It is a re-engagement with someone toxic. It is pulling you back into a drama and a life with someone or even not a life, just communication with someone that manipulates you. So we got to resist them. We got to, if you have chosen in your life to go no contact, or if you have chosen in your life to stay away from toxic people, and you have chosen to not let that person back in, then you need to resist the Hoover. Understand that all those feelings I described, and then some are going to happen. You're going to feel conflicted and confused and torn. You're going to feel angry. You're going to feel sad. You're going to feel scared. Like any emotion under the sun is going to be there and it's going to be bigger than you think it should be. You're going to be surprised by your reaction often to the Hoover. You're going to be afraid of waiting for them to happen. Well, instead of that, let's look at ways to cope with it. So number one thing, stay in your reality. Stay in your reality. You wish for a life free from toxic people. That's your reality. Your reality is you're moving down your little track in your life, going down the different tracks your life's going to take you. It does not involve them anymore. That's your reality. Stay there. Stay there. It's going to pull you and sidetrack you. Just stick yourself back on your track. Remember where you were. Remember where you're going and remember what you want for your life. It can help if you haven't been hoovered yet to write down what it is you want for your life. If you have, it can still help. Write down what it is you want for your life. Write down the the path you're taking, the things you want, the people you want, how you want your life to look and work towards that and realize that this toxic person is never going to lead you there. So 
stay in that reality. Um, don't dismiss your feelings, but don't engage with your feelings to the point of reacting to them. Understand they're there. Understand that you may need to process some and you may need to like recover from this. But if you're feeling your empathy evoked and they are and they're like, oh my gosh, like I had one client and she said that he fell off. Okay, this is someone she'd been divorced from a couple years, years or, or separated from a couple years. Was as close to no contact as possible because there was still some loose ends. Shows up at her door. I fell off a ladder. I need you to take me to the emergency room. The man lived across town. So he was able to get in his car, drive across town and say, I fell off a ladder. I need you to, why didn't he just drive to the emergency room? Okay. Cause it was a Hoover playing on her empathy, knowing she's a caregiver, a caretaking person, a person that takes action to help people. And yeah, that, that so don't react to it. You get on the phone, you call 911, you say, I have a man who says he fell off a ladder and he needs your assistance and you hang up and that's it. And you let them go on their merry way in the ambulance and you don't help beyond that, right? It's not, it's, you don't even have to engage with the feelings you're having. It's going to evoke your own personal response to things and you don't have to engage with that. You can just feel it, know it's there and then not react, not respond, not engage. They don't belong in your life. Focus on your reality, not theirs, right? I said that. But really and truly, um, know what they're trying to do and know that it is a manipulation tactic to have um, energy and focus and all supply coming back to them. That's all it is. All right. You're being manipulated. If you're being hoovered, you're being manipulated again by this toxic person. Resist, 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 resist. Talk to someone. Talk to anyone that knows what you're going through and what a Hoover is. Talk it through. Get on a support group. Um, get in the group coaching, whatever you need. Have the support there so that when it happens, if it happens, um, you've, got, you've got somewhere to talk it through. Because you're going to feel all kinds of things, okay? Um, have your list of toxic behaviors that that person did. Your list of all the horrible things and reread it remember, remember the truth. Your cognitive dissonance might be flaring up. Remember the truth of what you lived, right? Um, allow your feelings. Like I said, you got to feel them. You got to process them. You will get through it. All right. Don't get hard on yourself. Don't get hard on yourself. Even if you engage, don't get hard on yourself. Even if you get sucked back in, simply put your feet back on your path and start walking right? Start moving toward something healthier for you. Um, just reinstate no contact. Just realize that you got pulled back in and you're going to pull yourself back out and keep going. Um, yeah. Um, so really it's knowing that they're doing these things, knowing that Hoover's are manipulation, knowing that it's really hard to resist sometimes and being kind to yourself while you go through the process of whatever it is for you that helps you get through it and keep puts them back in the no contact status back and gets them back out of your life and lets you move forward. I am Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com. And if you need any information about me, about coaching with me or the group coaching that we have going, check it out in the main description of every video. There's um, lots of ways to get support. There's also free support on Facebook um, that's linked there as well. So please reach out, get the help you need if you need it, get the peer help if you need it. And um, we're here for you. So I will see you guys next time. Hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up and that's it. Bye-bye.